Hey boys and girls, welcome to week three of July. This month we've been talking about faith. Faith is believing what you can't see because of what you can see. So I want you to um, remember that even though you can't see God, you see the things that he does in your life and that's how we, where faith comes in. That's where you believe in him even though you can't see him with your eyes. We're so grateful for you and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. See you next time. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of an epic journey by sea. Uh. Ah! Land ho! Land ho! Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Even when things fall apart. Especially when things fall apart. Like in today's story. Are we spoiling the story? Well, there's a giant shipwreck. Yep, we're spoiling the story. It's pretty crazy. Waves bashing everywhere. Timbers cracking up and snapping apart. Uh, we got it. I just think it's an awesome excuse to create our own explosion. Sounds dangerous. Not when we use... These. What are they for? 
An exploding star. Cool. Then let's make it. What? A piece of carpet? Well, this is easier to do on carpet. Where do we start? Well, you're gonna need five popsicle sticks. Do they have to be different colors? Nope, but it's more fun that way. Hmm. You're gonna wanna start by making an A shape with green on the bottom here, red over yellow, just like that. You're gonna wanna keep pressing down on these intersections as we continue on because it's gonna wanna explode a bit too early. You're gonna wanna take this blue stick and slide it under the yellow, over the red, and lock it under that green. Thank you. And then take the purple stick and slide it under the green, over yellow and blue, and lock it under the red. Basically doing the exact same thing as the blue, just on the other side. A star is born. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch that about seven more times. But first, watch this. Here goes. Whoa, let's see that again. When popsicle sticks are woven together, potential energy is built up via tension in the sticks. When one end of the stick is released, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, flinging the sticks up and out into a chain reaction. Okay, that's super cool, but it happens too fast. And that's why we're making a cobra weave next. Cobra weave? Well, there's a snake in today's story too. To make the cobra weave, we're gonna start with red over yellow, just like the star. Then take your blue stick and place it over the red stick and under the yellow stick, making kind of a wonky A. Then take the green stick, place it under the red stick and over the yellow. Make sure to keep it parallel to the blue stick. From here, take the purple, Place it under the blue and over the green. Take the orange and place it under the yellow and over purple. Perfect. And from here, you repeat the pattern until you've got a length that you're satisfied with. What happens now? Release the cobra! Wow! Oh, I gotta see that again. It's so much wreckage. Speaking of which, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. The Apostle Paul traveled thousands of miles and started many new churches, upsetting both Jewish religious leaders and Roman authorities. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Brian. Our friend Paul told the story of Jesus everywhere he went, even when it got him in trouble. At last, a Roman commander had Paul arrested. When some men plotted to take Paul's life, the commander had Paul taken to the governor in Caesarea. Here, Paul was kept for two years. Finally, when unfair accusations were made about him before a new governor, Paul demanded, I appeal to Caesar. Now, Paul was a Roman citizen, and it was his right to get a fair trial before the ruling Caesar. But that meant an epic and dangerous trip all the way to Rome. Paul and several other prisoners were handed over to a centurion of the Imperial Regiment. I am Julius. Hail Caesar! So the men set sail, eventually making it to a harbor called Fair Havens. Paul warned Julius and the crew. Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss of ship and cargo and to our own lives also. The pilot and ship's owner disagreed. This is a terrible place to spend the winter. 
We should sail on to the harbor at Phoenix. Julius listened to the pilot and the ship's owner instead of Paul. And when a gentle south wind began to blow, they jumped at the chance to set sail once more. Anchors away! But within a short time, that soft breeze became a stiff wind. And finally, whipped up to a hurricane force gale. The ship was caught up by the waves and driven by the wind. After many days, the crew feared the ship would be torn apart and sink. They even threw cargo and the ship's tackle overboard to lighten the load. We're doomed! Even though everyone else had given up hope, Paul stood strong and continued to talk with God. At last, he addressed the crew and passengers. You should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. <laughs> Paul was not above a good, I told you so. Keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God told me, do not be afraid, Paul. You must go on trial in front of Caesar. God has shown his grace by sparing the lives of all those sailing with you. I have faith in God that it will happen. However, we must run aground on an island. That night, 14 days into the storm, the ship approached land. Fearing they would be dashed on the rocks, the sailors dropped the anchors. When daylight came, they decided to make for the shore, but the ship hit a sandbar. The ship began to break up. If you can swim, jump overboard. Otherwise, grab what you can and hold on. Everyone did as Julius commanded, and miraculously, all 276 people on board made it to shore alive. They discovered they had reached the island of Malta, where the islanders welcomed them with a roaring fire. As Paul tossed some brushwood on the fire, a snake bit his hand. The islanders were sure he would die, but Paul simply shook the snake off into the fire. When nothing happened to him, they decided he must be a god. There on Malta, Paul prayed for the chief official's father and that man was healed of a fever. Through the help of God's spirit, Paul healed other sick people on the island too, and the islanders gave Paul and his fellow passengers everything they needed. The end. Arrest, prison, shipwreck, snake bite? Ah, man, it's like Paul was just a magnet for terrible things to happen. Yeah, in a letter to the church in Corinth, Paul even wrote down an epic list of all the awful things he had experienced but through it all, Paul knew that God was right there with him to give him courage and strength. So what's our part in the story? Well, you probably haven't been shipwrecked or bitten by a snake recently. At least, let's hope not. But like Paul, you could probably make a list of all the bad things that have happened to you or things that you're facing right now. Maybe a family member is really sick in the hospital. Or maybe some kids in the neighborhood are being mean to you. Maybe the pet your family has had since you were a baby just died. Or you've got to get a cavity filled at the dentist. Whatever happens, no matter how bad it is, you can have faith that God is right there with you. Yep, God will never ever leave you, no matter what. God always loves you and promises to give you the resilience to make it through. When bad stuff happens, keep talking to God. Keep holding on. And God may not make the bad situation go away, but God will walk with you right through the middle of it. Yeah, I think you got it. See you next time. Here's the thing. When bad things happen, God is with you. Man, it looks like a shipwreck in here. I got an idea. Star Wars? Oh, yeah. Hey. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. Back here, Zeke. Gotcha.